Welcome back to the final day of the week of Bumblebee figures. The only week brought to you entirely by Amazon. Not because they sponsored these videos, but because it's the only place where I can find any damn new figures. Hasbro, fix your distribution already! So the people have spoken, and you guys really want this kind of articulation to be called sass hands. Or narcissists. It was neck and neck on the voting, and any time one would take the lead by getting like three consecutive votes, the other would get three consecutive votes of their own. And when all said and done, the pun defeated the play on words. All hail narcissists. I feel like nail checking hands deserved way more votes than it got. Anyways, it's Bumblebee Movie Wheeljack, and this is why I've always hated the Earthrise Wheeljack. Since long before that thing ever came out and all we had was pictures, I was screaming from the mountaintops that we could have gotten a well-proportioned, cool-looking Wheeljack with great posing, a good non-breakable transformation, and a good space alt mode, or just a good alt mode in general. And that figure had none of that. What positives did that thing even have? It looks G1. whoop de doo And then, uh, yeah, there's nothing else. Then this comes out and just styles on that hunk of crap, being better than it in literally every way except for being G1, and maybe the hips being loose on all the versions of this figure. Yeah, and? It doesn't have the fiddly ugly windshield bits that pop off during transformation and can break. What's your point? I just said that this guy had good proportions, and that's kind of a lie. I mean, this is a goofy built boy, but that's part of the design this time. He's supposed to look like an alien, so they gave him a weird squat bulbous build, but it's the one he had in the movie. It's accurate unlike the ER version, which was trying to be accurate and failing at it when compared to any other Transformer series. Except for the War for Cybertron show, which was directly based off his toy, so if they failed to make him look right, that would have been real weird. Right, every character introduced after Season 1? So, this looks like it should. Therefore, we're all peaches and roses, right? Well, no. This does have its own problems. Like, these brackets jutting off the feet are just some of the worst things I've ever seen. Also, his feet are clear plastic. This confuses me, as they are literally 100% painted. Why would you do this? This is spending money for the sake of wasting it. There is nothing here that has to be clear, but instead they were like, let's use a lot of paint on nothing, just so we can work on the feet more. You know, if you wanted to paint the whole feet, you could have just used normal plastic there, Quentin Tarantino. Also, these handguards are incredibly strange. They're on a hinge, but they don't go anywhere. Poor K. Also, life would just be so inconvenient with these. Imagine how consciously you'd have to pick up a glass with these strapped to your arms. I don't know why these don't just hinge around to the back here. Maybe just so it helps to hide the fillet of fists from view? It's like someone chopped his hands off at the pinky. Also his neck. Very much a pull his head just sits on and not very much of an actual neck. Plus, getting all the gripes out of the way in one go, the backs of the legs. Not hollow, but very unclean. Oh, also, him legs like cooked noodle. They keep him standing surprisingly well considering the fact that they basically can't hold themselves up. Okay, that's like 400 words of complaints. Let's talk about why this figure is great. And movie lovers, come on. We have to be on the same page this time. This looks so much better than the one that was in the movies, right? This isn't haunting my nightmares, so please just agree with me that this, even if it is more G1, is an infinitely more appealing design than- <laughs> But honestly, it's not just good by comparison, it's just good. It's cool. I find it clever how they got his wings looking right by mounting them to his arms. A novel solution that leads to some oddities. Now this wheeljack is small, standing basically as tall as Rufus's hunchback. So yes, the ER figure is bigger, but I just don't care. If a smaller figure has a mind-blowing transformation, more effort, more design work, quality, and better posing, who cares if it's not as quite as big as a figure when the other figure isn't even big? Now personally, I don't much care for the white they used on him. When will they give us the pure white wheeljack we deserve? I'm sick of this pre-yellowed bullshit. By the way, people were telling me that one of the main reasons others don't like the ratchet in this line is that it yellows extremely quickly. Which is hilarious to me because of the many reviews I saw hating on that thing, not one of them brought that up. Anyways, this figure looks sick. He's got great color breakup caused by several different base colors of plastics, plus a wise application of a limited amount of paint where it mattered. Paint that probably didn't have to be as limited as it was if it weren't for the feet, but I digress. He's got a good amount of sculpted detail, but among most movie figures, he's actually got a lot less than I expect in a lot of places. He's pretty tidy from both front and back, and while his aesthetic is new and strange, I will say that it is consistent with the bulbous shoulders and childbearing hips. Fitting, since he's the daddy of the Dinobots. I hate what I just said. I like how the rotations on his hips are actually different colored plastics with its own special sculpting, kind of making it look like he mounted a pair of turbines in there. And the head is fantastic. Real talk. Does anyone think Steve Blum is the appropriate choice for the voice of Wheeljack? He had one line and all I could think about for the rest of the scene was his voice. Anyways, old Slinky Face here gets a real redesign on this head. For some reason, he seems to have the jowls that Prime had in the other movies. Like they couldn't just let the unlabeled tin can that is his face be fully prominent. So it's a lot narrower and covered up than normal. It looks cool, the whole face has an aggressive vibe. I'm just saying, Wheeljack's face confused me as a child, and I want it to confuse me as an adult. I also really like the blue paint they used for his ears. It really looks electric, like it's fluorescing. It feels like there's an energy pulsing through them. Wheeljack has Loki, the second or third most iconic head in all the Transformers. And people don't talk about that enough. 
The face looks mean. And you know what? I like me a silly science boy, but I get why they wanted a more action-oriented face. So ultimately, the look of this is great. It's a cool redesign of one of the Transformers' most unique-looking characters just reveling in the fact that it's supposed to be alien. And all of its flaws in the looks department are forgivable or subjective ones. The problems with the build are definitely something that should have been hammered out, though. Now, the accessories he comes with are his gun, shocker, once again, it's very similar to the other two, but this one feels like the smallest of all of them, with the biggest differentiator making it unique being the muzzle and the projection coming off the back. The only other accessory he has is the backdrop, which is the same backdrop which comes with the brawn, which is the same backdrop which comes with the ratchet, which is the same backdrop that comes with the ravage and shockwave, just bigger. So, he could have done better on accessories, especially the stupid backdrop. I can't believe they were so lazy as to cheap out on cardboard and ink that they used the same one five times, and 20 bucks says that the RC is going to come with the same backdrop. Posability on this guy is interesting, to say the least. Head has a lot more range than normal, though I'm worried I'm going to snap off this all-too-thin peg. Shoulders pull a small amount less than a 90, but all the arm joints are exceptionally tight, and moving them tends to untransform the torso. Scrape a little bit of the plastic off of here and put it on the hips, damn it! Maximum elbows. No wrists whatsoever. Legs do a monster kick forward, unimpeded going back, but they only pull a 45 off to the side. And these have rotations at the hips that are just like the bronze shoulders, limiting the range you can spin them around. Normal 90 knees, but you can cheat them super hard for a little more, and the feet have a small amount of toe down, and that's it. So, posability is oddly similar to the brawn in some weird ways. Like shoulders, hips, thighs pulling less range than they typically should, but overall, this has significantly better posing. Much better head, better shoulders, and even if the hips have something limiting them, they still work a lot better than brawn shoulders. Transformation is fantastic. It's easily my favorite of the three. There are some problems, like the wheel arches can pop off, and there's some clearance issues. Plus, it's super strange that you only turn the head sideways and not all the way around, but otherwise, it's just a brilliant process that really shows how you can make an interesting transformation that winds up producing a more G1 accurate alt mode that is somehow also a space mode than the thing that was trying to be the G1 version. Seriously, somehow, this space alt mode that does a great job fitting that description captures the shape that Wheeljack's Earth mode is supposed to have significantly better than the Earthrise's all-too-weird wedge of a car. This looks sick, and it really fits Wheeljack. This feels like the mode Wheeljack would probably have if he ever went back to Cybertron after being on Earth. Because, I mean, it would be impossible for this to be the one he had before that, because as we all know, it's unchanging law that Wheeljack's first alt mode is a space hovercraft. This rolls really well, and you can even peg the gun onto the top, which normally on a car former looks really bad, but here looks like an extension to the engine, making it remarkably cohesive. There's a lot of small gaps on this thing that I can't really get to line up like you'd want, and trying to get them more pegged in really only makes other parts want to untransform. So it's cool. I'll just leave it. I only mind a ton. Also, you don't really need to flip this bit away for the alt mode, even if you are using the gun roof. It looks cool either way. So, it's a great alt mode and an awesome figure that proves my thesis that the Earthrise has always sucked. That thing is an unintentionally goofy looking, poorly transforming, potentially breakable, bad alt mode having thing with really unimpressive posing, whereas this is just about better in every way. It's intentionally goofy looking to match the alien style they were going for, it transforms very well, being both interesting and fun on that front, whereas the Earthrise one isn't, especially on the windshield section, which can suck my tank. I've seen no reports of this thing breaking, unlike the many I've heard from people about those fiddly ugly little splits in the ER's windshield that ruin what's already a pretty bad alt mode that looks nothing like it should in the first place. Whereas this had nothing it needed to look like, and it still wound up looking more like the thing that Earthrise should have been, and also somehow a thing completely opposed to that at the same time. That's some black magic right there. And then I shouldn't have been comparing the posability of this thing with Brawn, because I need to finally put the other wheeljack in the ground. The only thing the Earthrise version is better in is that it has wrist swivels and ankle tilts. But this has a better head, better elbows, better legs, better knees. It's just so much easier to make this guy look cool. Though I suppose anything is easier than actually impossible given the stupid monkey arms on the ER and the saggy build. Anyways, enough complaining about other figures. This is a great figure on its own. A fun one worth having even if it weren't just better than another version of the character. And honestly, this is easily my favorite one of the week personally. It has the most interesting transformation. It has easily the best alt mode. Its posing is pretty good, probably not the best of the three, but good. Not that it needed to be objectively the best for me to like it most. You like what you like, and that doesn't have to mean you like good things. You can love a bad thing and hate a good thing, and there's never anything wrong with that. But objectively, I think that this is a really good one, and you will enjoy it if you buy it. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And, if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.